this video, we're going to take a more comprehensive and updated look at working with symmetry in 3D Coat. Now, it works roughly the same in each room as far as bringing up the symmetry panel and mirroring across a given axis. However, there are some specific ways that symmetry works in each room or each workspace, and we're going to take a look at that. We're going to start with the voxel room first. I want to thank Lee Banforth for the use of his Stink Dragon model for this demonstration, so thank you Lee. Now let's go ahead and get started by bringing up our axis handle so we can see just uh, which way this object is aligned. So let's go to the upper left hand corner under the view menu, go about midway down to axis, and if you have a hotkey assigned to it you can quickly just toggle that on and off at your convenience. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is invoke the symmetry panel where we have a number of different options. There are two ways of doing that. One is going all the way to the upper left hand corner, clicking on the symmetry option here in the menu bar. You can actually dock this by moving to the very top of this little panel, click, hold and drag, and pull it into your viewport. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our options here also want to point out that you can bring any of these panels right to your cursor by hitting the hotkey for it. So in this case it's the S key and it comes right to the cursor. As soon as you move your mouse away it disappears. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on that, drag it, and pin it. We're going to start by looking at our different axis planes and you can tell that they are color coded red for X, green for Y, and blue for Z. We'll look at reset symmetry planes here shortly. You can turn off the visibility of the symmetry plane yet keep symmetry active by clicking on show symmetry plane. Now you might not see anything initially and I don't know if this is a bug but as soon as you move your model okay it's gone. Click on that, bring it back up. Okay, so let's go ahead and point something else out. The last option here is lock symmetry plane. It disables you from being able to move your symmetry plane uh, while you're working. Uh, for example, if you hold the tab key and just move your cursor, you don't have to click and drag, just move your cursor, and as soon as you let up from the tab key, it will place your symmetry plane where you last had your cursor. So if I click lock symmetry plane and try to do this now it won't do anything it, it locks it into place I cannot edit it okay so now <clears throat> let's try to fix our little uh, symmetry plane issue here let's try and click reset symmetry planes aha we've got an issue here so let's try to remedy that clicking to global space and clicking to global space generally uh, resets the symmetry plane to the origin of the axis. Okay, so it looks like it placed it right down the center of the origin, but the problem is my model is off center. It's not perfectly uh, aligned at the origin. So let's go ahead and fix that first. So I know this is a bit confusing uh, to new users, but the, the point I want to try to get at is if you have symmetry plane issues, uh, if you start from the origin, if your model is centered at the origin uh, and you start working in symmetry, you generally won't have any issues. But if for some reason you move the model and your symmetry plane gets out of whack, the best way to really make sure that you have an accurate uh, you know, mirror is to go to the transform tool in the tool options panel click to center mass. Basically 3D Coat has a invisible bounding box and it's going to place this gizmo at the very center of it. Okay, and now we can move this X, Y, Z. Uh, we can change it numerically one axis at a time or we can just quickly zero all three at the same time by clicking this little X here. All right. So with that done, now when I right click on the layer and choose global space, that should reset the symmetry plane back to the origin or the zero point 
of the axis. Okay, so let's inspect this. Let's go to our upper right hand corner uh, of the user interface here where we have our navigation bar. All the way to the right we have this little cube that lets you toggle between orthographic and perspective view. Okay, let's go to orthographic. Under the camera options here, let's choose top. And I can see it's right smack dab down the center at the zero point of the x-axis. Okay, so that's looking good. All right. Now let's look at copying from one side to the other. Let's say, for example, we turn symmetry off and proceed to work on one side of the model. I'm going to just lay down a few brush strokes here. Okay, so we've done a little bit of work here, and let's say now I want to copy this over. I first need to enable symmetry along your preferred axis, and with that done, I need to now pick which side I want to actually mirror over. There are a couple different ways to do this. One way is once you have the symmetry plane enabled, if you just perform a single click, okay, or even a single brush stroke, you could even hold the shift key and just give it a quick tap. That's pretty non-destructive. It's not going to really modify your work any. I'm going to show another way of doing this, but let me first turn symmetry off and put down some new strokes. Let's move this out of the way. What I want to do is hover over the side and hit H on my keyboard. Now H will normally, if you have a lot of different layers, H will basically pick whatever layer is under your cursor. All right, so that's very handy that way, but it will also allow you to pick the side you want to mirror from. 3D Coat just needs some little hint to tell it which side you want and now all we have to do is go over to our Vox Tree layer panel and click on this little icon for sim copy. Additionally you could choose it from the voxel menu as well but let's click on our little icon okay and there we have it now symmetry when you turn it off in 3D Coat it just it's really just a temporary mode uh, if you have the symmetry plane on it will apply the work in real time if you turn symmetry off it's not going to undo the work you just did okay so now we're going to look at a few additional ways of using symmetry in 3d coat I first want to go ahead and delete this character okay let's go to the object section choose primitives we could use any one of those standard primitives or freeform primitives uh, whatever we prefer in this case let's choose something a little bit more interesting In the models palette, we're going to use an object as a freeform primitive. Maybe something like this. I'm going to click on transform whole lattice. And so that I don't have to move all the way over to the tool options panel uh, to make a specific transform. In other words, 90 degree or 45 degree increment, something like that. Uh, I can be very specific by just clicking on the widget that I want to use. So I'm going to click on this little rotate widget, click and hold, hit the space bar. Now I can type in 90 for 90 degrees. There you have it. Okay. So I can get out of that like that. So we have symmetry actually here in primitives as well. When you have a preview object like this, like the primitives or maybe the curves tool, something like that or if you're bringing a, a model in you may 
want to create a copy of it on one side or the other. For example, maybe you're creating a, a bracelet or something for a model or maybe a, an, an armor plate or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and um, move it. And if I want this to be mirrored to the other side, a couple different options. Uh, we could just go ahead and hit apply and then go through the same options for sim copy. Uh, we could best or most efficiently just simply uh, turn our symmetry plane on. Okay, now hit apply. And you can see it mirror that over. I'm going to hit undo. And I'll turn the symmetry plane off because I don't need it for this next option. And that is the instancer. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit apply. I'm going to go to the instancer. And if I just want to make a quick copy, uh, I can simply choose new mirror across X. And as you may know, uh, instances are less taxing on the system than a physical copy. So again, you may want to work this way. And so whatever I do on this side, it will be copied one way or the other. So let's choose the move tool. And let's say, make an adjustment. I don't see anything. What happens? But as soon as you move, start to navigate, boom, you get your change. Okay, and I'm not sure if that's a bug. I just noticed a lot of things in 3D Coat uh, with Symmetry Plane and, and some other operations sometimes that it doesn't operate or it doesn't update instantaneously. You have to move to see the change and hopefully Andrew will address that uh, here in the near future. So, okay. So, again, I can come over here and do the same thing. Make sure I have the right layer selected. Okay. And you notice how it changes either way. So that's another option for symmetry. Let's go ahead and uh, and if I want to uninstance this so I can make uh, distinct or unique changes uh, I can always go back to the instancer okay make sure I have the right layer selected and I can go to the bottom and choose uninstance this or uninstance all. So let's go ahead and delete that and go to the bottom, clear. Let's go back to primitives and let's choose to reset primitive and it'll bring it right back to the center. Okay, so what if we wanted to keep local symmetry? What you can do is first create the object at the origin. Okay, so you have a point of reference for the application so let's go ahead and uh, again we'll flip our little object here. Click hold, space bar, 90 degrees, okay. And click apply. Now with that done, let's go back to the transform tool. To center mass. Okay. Now let's go ahead and turn our symmetry plane on so that when we move it now, watch how the symmetry plane will follow along. Okay, so this is the way to work. Start at the origin, uh, you know, apply the primitive or the curve tool, whatever, uh, apply it, then move your object and the symmetry plane will follow along. But it needs some point of reference. So it's best to start at the, the origin, make your copy, uh, and then you know, turn your symmetry plane on and move. Okay, so now choose the move tool. You'll notice how these transformations are localized instead of global. So I hope that helps and we'll take a look at one last form of working in symmetry and that is axial symmetry. It works in a radial fashion just as the name implies so to demonstrate this I'll just skip forward to a new scene you can now choose under the adjust section right here axial symmetry 
and I can use one of the quick align buttons to align it to a specific axis. And you can see how you can quickly create some really strange uh, objects or some really fascinating objects I should say. You can change the order, make something really nice out of just a, a click or two. Okay, and you can also change the values here. What I like to do is, is to make sure that I don't have any perspective distortion, I like to go into orthographic mode. Okay, and then I can move it. And you can see, go to a top view, or maybe a bottom view. So working in orthographic view will kind of constrain it to two axes while you're working. And again, you can change the orientation to create something entirely different. So this is perfect for creating very fast Nernies or Griebles or really random sci-fi objects. And with that we'll wrap up this look at symmetry in the Voxel Room of 3D Coat. We'll now move on in the next video to working in symmetry within the Retopo Room and look at some UVs as well. So thank you for watching.